An unexpected international agreement emerged from the G7 summit in Germany today. Leaders, including Stephen Harper, promised to eliminate the use of oil and gas, but not anytime soon. In fact, not for decades. Senior correspondent Terry Malewski is covering the Prime Minister. Terry. Well, Peter, the summit ended as expected with compromises, both on Ukraine and on climate change. But who would have predicted a month ago that Stephen Harper would sign a communique calling for nothing less than the phasing out of fossil fuels? Well, he did. An ambitious agreement on climate change was relentlessly promoted by the host of the summit, German Chancellor Angela Merkel, who wanted a commitment to decarbonization, an end to the use of fossil fuels by the year 2050. She compromised and added 50 years to make it the end of the century, which makes it more of a symbolic statement, but still a dramatic one. And we have committed to the fact that in the course of this century, we want to see a, and we need, a decarbonization of the world economy. Nobody's going to start to shut down their industries or turn off the lights. Not yet, anyway. But for Stephen Harper, a pledge to phase out oil and gas anytime is still quite a statement. After promoting fossil fuels throughout his career, Harper agreed that things must change. We've simply got to find a way to create uh, lower carbon emitting uh, sources of energy, and that work is ongoing, and our government, as you know, has made substantial investments in, in that kind of technological development. The other thorny issue tackled by the summit was what to do about Russian aggression in Ukraine. Again, there was a compromise, no arms for Ukraine and no new sanctions on Russia. But existing sanctions will be maintained, not allowed to expire this summer as some European countries planned. And every member of the G7 continues to maintain sanctions on Russia for its aggression against Ukraine. So the man who was not invited to the summit, Russian President Vladimir Putin, was nonetheless on everyone's mind. Harper, for one, has harshly condemned Putin in recent days and kept it up today. Mr. Putin makes it his business to just deliberately be troublesome. Harper put the best face on the summit's lack of new sanctions, saying that could still happen. There is ongoing dialogue about what additional, um, what additional uh, steps could be taken should Mr. Putin's behavior escalate. And the communique does say that the leaders stand ready to impose new sanctions if need be. But it is the climate agreement that catches the eye. These summits can be dull stuff, but Stephen Harper saying that oil and gas have no long-term future, that is something, Peter. All right, Terry, thanks very much. Terry Malofsky in the Bavarian Alps today.